lovely leafy historic Elizabeth Bay. Today it's a real citizenship here, indeed work to earn that a way to help and rehabilitate the mentally ill. We're still on track for the worst week since January 2016. This is lovely, leafy, historic Elizabeth Bay. Today it's a real fusion of 21st century urban living and young professionals love it. It's so close to the bay, it's only a quick stroll into the CBD too for work. It's certainly a densely populated suburb with plenty of art deco apartments, but some of the most coveted locations are here, overlooking the beautiful park at Rushcutters Bay. By all accounts, the most expensive place to live in Australia is here in Sydney and the real estate is no exception. But if you work in the inner city and you have the means, this charming locale is worth a look. Are you liking the look of this area? If you can find an apartment with a bit of space and perhaps even views like this, maybe Elizabeth Bay should be on your shopping list. Australia is known for being one of the most multicultural societies and most immigrants who are granted citizenship here indeed work to earn that newly acquired national identity and they come from all walks of life. One such immigrant is Lin Ye who came to Australia when she was just 19 years old with her family from China. She took full advantage of the educational and business opportunities that she found available here and after qualifying in medicine and science Lynn decided to start her own health pharmaceuticals company called Homeart Pharmaceuticals. Well, fast forward 25 successful years and that business now employs 100 people. And Lynn's made sure that she's contributing back to the diversity of her community by employing people from different ethnic backgrounds. And outside of work, she's giving back to the country that has presented her with lifelong opportunities by supporting Food Bank and the Royal Flying Doctors Service. Just like Lynn, there are thousands of successful immigrants who contribute positively towards the growth of Australia's economy. And tonight, we're going to hear some of their stories. Well, it was 1838, here on the banks of the Parramatta River, where Sydney's first ever mental asylum first opened its doors. It was called the Gladesville Mental Hospital and locals referred to it as the Tarbon Creek Lunatic Asylum. What started out as a way to help and rehabilitate the mentally ill soon turned quite sinister. This facility was built for 50 patients, but by as early as 1844, there was 150 inside those four walls. And then there were the rumours. There were rumours of abuse, there were rumours of restraint of patients for hours upon hours, and deaths, an awful lot of untimely deaths. Such was the stigma of mental health at the time that the families of those deceased patients would often decline to collect the bodies. And as a result, here beneath me is a mass grave of 1,200 patients. It's no wonder that they say this is the most haunted site in Sydney. Good evening, Lindsay Douglas here with this week's finance news headlines. Well, the market was 0.6% lower in early trade on Friday, and despite clawing back most of its early losses, we are still on track for the worst week since January 2016. Heavy losses in oil prices overnight weighed on the energy sector and they've been down about 1.5% for the session. You can see that in Santos, uh, Oil Search Limited, Woodside Petroleum and Origin Energy who are all down between 1.15 and 1.76%. 
Macquarie Group shares have turned around after a very rough morning, ending the day flat at 115.53. Gold miners were amongst the only to enjoy gains on Thursday's plunge, and a slight rise in copper and iron ore overnight has spread some joy to the other big players. Well, BHP, they're up 1.32% to 33.84. Rio Tinto, they've gained 1.85% to 78.03 by 4.30 this afternoon. But for all the news, join me in the late night program this evening. See you then.